Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I just got to say, approaching 500, chuffed. Thank you so much. It's just amazing that you guys are, are following me like this. I, I started this out with, with none of this in mind and it's just blown up on me in, in just a, shoot, a few short months. I'm just, I'm, I'm totally overwhelmed. Thank you so much. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a NAS or a file server, whichever one you want to call it on FreeBSD using Samba. So I've got a FreeBSD instance running. Without further ado, let's get on with it. So here we are, I'm logged in as root. And the first thing I'm gonna do is install Samba. But first we need to find out which one's available to us. Helps if you spell it right. So there we go, we've got 413. So we'll install that. This hopefully shouldn't take too long. He says. 58 packages. I'll skip through this. This bit should be fairly trivial. Nothing has been done to this host at all. It's literally just a fresh install of FreeBSD. So literally, the next thing we need to do is set up the configuration file because there shouldn't be a configuration file there already. So let's have a quick look. There you go. No Samba configuration at all. So we'll add one. Use the text editor of your choice. You know me. I like Pico. And we'll just put in a, a few bits. Can't spell today. Apologize for that. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in one for our user. Call it data. Path equals home and Gary H. Public. No, we don't want it public. Writable. Yes, by the logged in user. Printable? Nah, not going to print. And if we want guests to log into it? No, we don't. And then, of course, the valid users. So that should be all for our configuration file. So what we need to do next is use the sysrc to set the Samba server to enabled. And then we'll actually start the service. Let's see what happens, shall we? There we go. It started. So such a dry throat, say. The server is now running and we still can't access it. And there's a reason for that. Got no credentials to log in with. So what do we do by that, with that? Well, Samba relies on, on system users, but you have to add them into Samba. So let's add in our user account. And we'll put in our password. Boom. There we go. So it's popped up with a username. Okay. Right. And so what we've now got is our Windows share or our network attached share. So let's have a look in Gary H's folder. What should we see? Helps if I do it right, doesn't it? New text document, and that is this new text document here. So if I now delete this, goodbye, and then do an ls in my home directory. Look, it's gone. Let's, let's touch a file here. 
make sure we're in our home directory and touch test.txt. Yeah. So in our share, there it is. Let's add something to it. Hello world. And then let's cat it from our terminal. Hello world. Well, that's just amazing. So what we've now got essentially is a, is a, a file server. Now you can do stuff with this. Like you could add in the ability to, to browse it by, um, from an Apple device and to do that, what you would do would be to install Netatalk. So you could install Netatalk and that would uh, allow you to use it as, um, as a, a location for your time machine backups. If you're using Apple devices, which not in this house, thank you. Well, we have, that's not fair. They're not running Mac OS or any Mac software, but Hey, that's a story for another day. And what you could also do is, so we could also set up an iTunes media with forked D double A P D. Yeah. So that, that would get you going. The only thing that you haven't got on this kind of setup, of course, is a nice fancy web GUI, but I don't really put much stock in that. And to be fair, if we come out of there and go back to user, user local etc and we cat our smb.4.conf that's literally the, all that's there so you've got your global settings which is your work group and your realm your net bios name and i had to add in ntlm auth just for windows 11 and i think windows 10 needs that as well but if you're on earlier 7 7 8 you may not need that and then just the path to the actual share. And you can create these shares anywhere, of course. So if you wanted a shared volume for everyone to dump crap on, you could create a folder in, let's say, home dumping ground and just give it permissions for any group member to write to it. And you just set it up in your, in your SMB file. Um, restart SMB or Samba and away you go. I don't know why people need feel the need to buy fancy NASs. It's NASs. Is that right? NASs? The plural of NAS. Network attached storage. Why they have to go out and buy a 500, 600 pound device. And that's even without discs, which just, you know, that, that, that just flabbergasts me. Um, so this is the easiest way, if you ask me. Just set it up with Samba and away you go. Simple. All you need to know is how to search the internet and you can find this information. It's, it's just not, it's not difficult. Or you can follow along with my video. That's the whole purpose of it, of course. And, and that's why I do it. So there you go, guys. That's, I hope you you find that useful because you know, that, that allows you to take an old machine, turn it into a, a, a file server. And if you wanted to, you could set this up with, um, you know, your cloud, uh, backup solution or. Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever you're using and just get it to sync that over to that. Not difficult. If you'd like me to, to talk you how to use Google Drive or OneDrive on FreeBSD, please leave a comment in, in, in the comment section underneath this video and um, I'll try and get that done for you. But for now, as always, I hope you find that useful. If you do, please leave a like and subscribe and uh, don't forget to click the notification icon on the bell and it will tell you when I release new videos. Come back for more and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.